Hey there, it's Louie, and in this Amy Groomy crochet pattern, we're going to be crocheting a pangolin. These armored baddies are the most traffic mammal in the world, and their scales and meats are actually in really high demand. These mammals also have more vertebrae than any other animal, and their tails are semi-prehensile, which lets them helps them to climb trees and uh, grab things. Female pangolins can also use their tail to herd and carry their young. How cute is that? Pangolins also have a very unique defense system. When they're faced with a predator, a pangolin will curl up into their armor, and if that doesn't work, the pangolin can release a righteous toot and, un and unleash their anus glands just like a skunk. Isn't that gross? <laughs> This pattern is not originally designed by me, however, but another Amy Groomy artist, Philip Haw, aka at Sir Pearl Gray. This is part of a huge collaboration project that me and four other Amy Groomy artists are doing to raise money for the World Wildlife Fund, a nonprofit that's mission is to uh, is to conserve nature and reduce the most pressing threats to diversity of life on Earth. Each designer in the collection made a different Amy Groomy pattern for an endangered creature, which you can see on screen now. These patterns are all donate to download. By donating using the link on screen now or in the description below, you can get all of these patterns in the collection, each of which include a full video tutorial just like this one and an interactive PDF with check marks to keep track of your progress and time codes to go along with the video tutorial. 100% of proceeds for digital downloads will be donated to the World Wildlife Fund indefinitely. So if even if you're seeing this pattern years later, you can still support the cause. You can learn more about how to support and find all the patterns and designers in this year's collections, as well as previous years at clubcrochet.com slash earth day. Also, I'm going to be releasing a new video tutorial for one of these patterns every Friday over the next five weeks, as well as doing a live stream fundraiser the Sunday after. So make sure to like this video and subscribe down below so you don't miss out. Or donate to access the videos early and download the PDF versions. Finally, please, please share your finished pangolin with me and at Sir Pearl Gray by following and tagging us on social media. And use the hashtag crochet for Earth Day. Also, make sure to check out all the other designers' social accounts too. They're incredible artists that you definitely should be following if you're not already. Oh, also heads up, there is a left-handed video version of this available that you can find in the description. And we're working on a Spanish language PDF for each of these right now, which should be available pretty soon. Also, you can quickly jump around in this video by using the time codes in the description below or at the bar at the bottom of this video. Alrighty, I think that's just about it. Let's uh, talk about what kind of materials you're going to need to make this pangolin. For this pattern, you're going to need the following materials. I'm using all worsted weight yarn in 100% cotton. That's my favorite kind of yarn to use for Amy Gurumi. For this pattern, you're going to just need the colors jute and brown. Those are the two main colors. Jute is kind of like this tan color, and then we're using a warm brown for the back scales and the claws here. Because I'm using all worsted weight yarn, I'm going to be using a size G 4 millimeter crochet hook. That's my favorite size crochet hook to use for worsted weight yarn. If you use thicker yarn, use a thicker crochet hook. You'll also, of course, need a pair of scissors, a darning needle to sew in the ends. I really like using a crimped end like that. It helps me get in and out of hard to reach st stitches, which is especially useful for this pattern because there are a few parts that we need to sew together. You'll also need safety eyes. I'm gonna be using eight millimeter safety eyes in this video. If you'd like to get a bottle of eyes like this, I have them for sale in our shop. We have them in six millimeter, eight millimeter, and 10 millimeter. And of course, you're going to need a little bit of stuffing as well. Um, you'll probably need a little bit more than that, maybe two bags of this size worth. If you'd like to get a kit with all the materials that I'm using in this video, the exact same materials I'm using, we have them for sale in the uh, on our shop. You can find links to them in the description down below or at clubcrochet.com slash shop. Uh, proceeds for the World Wildlife Fund, uh, proceeds from the kits also go to the World Wildlife Fund. So it's another good way to help support um, the the World Wildlife Fund and uh and endangered species as well. Um, and you can get the exact same materials that I'm using in this pattern. All right, well, without further ado, let's get hooking. This pattern has, it, this pattern's pretty long, I'm not gonna lie. It has quite a lot of pieces that need to be sewn together. So let's just get rocking and rolling. We're gonna start by actually crocheting the head. 
Okay, so we're going to start with uh, our jute yarn here, and we're going to be making our head. Now, for the head, we're going to start with our magic loop method. Now, if you don't know how to do the magic loop method, I'm going to give you a quick rundown really quick. But I do have a full video tutorial that teaches you how to do multiple different kinds of the magic loop. If you'd like to check that out, I'll put a link right here and in the description. This is my favorite way to do the magic loop, however. You want to take the yarn with the end facing down towards the ground, and with your non-dominant hand, with your middle and thumb finger, you want to hold down the yarn and go over your index finger and then back around the middle finger and then go back over the index finger but create an X on the front and then back down on the back of your uh, middle finger and you want to make two parallel lines on the back. Take this end and the tail end and go in between your ring and pinky finger and close it in and that's going to hold it in place. Now take your crochet hook and you want to face the back of your hand towards you. Take your crochet hook and just go under the first bar and then hook onto the second bar like this. Pull that under the first bar and then twist it like this to create a little loop. See how we made a little loop there? Now going over that first bar, yarn over with the second one. You can help get, guide the yarn over your crochet hook with your index finger. With it hooked onto your hook, yarned over, you can pull it through the loop that's on the hook currently. The easiest way to pull it through that loop is to really kind of scoop it through like that, and it'll make sure that you get all of the yarn through and you don't accidentally grab a little bit of um, the other yarn. Okay, now once you have that pulled through, that's going to create a chain stitch, and now it's going to keep it locked into place and you can pull it off of your finger. Now you're going to have a little a loop here and this tail end. This tail end, when you pull it tighter, will tighten up that hole. And we're going to work all of our first stitches in our first round into the center of this magic loop. Now, before I go into round one, we do want to get a little bit of yarn in an alternate color just to use for a stitch marker. So I'm going to use just a little bit of this blue yarn here. You don't need very much. You only really need like, we'll go with like that much. And all you need to do is pull this through. Oh, actually, you know, we'll do this at the end of the round. I totally forgot. We want to do this at the end of round one. But at the end of round one, we're going to put this into the magic loop before we tighten it. Okay, so for round one of the head, we want to single crochet six times into the center of the magic loop. If you don't know how to do a single crochet, all you need to do is go into the center of the, the stitch. In this case, our stitch is going to be the magic loop itself. So you want to take your crochet hook, go into the center of the stitch, and then yarn over with the end attached to the ball, hook it onto the end of the yarn, and then pull that under the stitch. And then going over the stitch, in our case, the loop, yarn over with the end attached to the ball again, and then pull that through the two loops on the hook. Easiest way, really scoop it like that. That's going to be a single crochet. You want to make six single crochets for round one of the head. So let's do a second single crochet here. Go into the magic loop, yarn over with the end attached to the ball, pull it under the loop, going over, yarn over again, and pull through two loops on the hook. One, two. That's going to be two single crochets. If you look at the top here, you see those little Vs? Those are going to be indicators of which one is a, uh, what, how your how many stitches you have. So if you count those V's, you can count the number of stitches you have. So in our case, we have one, two. All right, let's keep going. We want six of those single crochets. So go in again, yarn over and pull it under, and then going over, yarn over and pull through two. There's three single crochets. This is going to be my fourth single crochet. Two more. Here's my fifth single crochet, pulled through. And then we want one more single crochet to finish up round one. Pull under, going over it, pull through two. All right, now you should have six single crochets into the magic loop. Again, if you want to count those Vs, you can make sure you have six single crochets. And now we're going to take our, our stitch crowner. We're just going to put it right in between the magic loop. And then we can take this tail end from the magic loop and pull it nice and tight, and it'll tighten our hole up. And you want to make sure it's tightened around that blue yarn, just so it keeps it in, so we can keep track of where we're at. 
I'm going to pull it almost all the way through so there's just a little bit of that blue showing on one side. And I'm going to fold it over the end of the round and work around it and pretend we... it Just pretend it's not even there. And that's going to help us keep track of where we're at. Okay. So for round two of the head, we want to do an increased stitch into each single crochet that we made into round one. This pattern is going to be worked almost entirely in the round, meaning that we're going to keep working around in a spiral without turning. There will be some parts of this pattern where you, where you will need to turn. However, the majority of this pattern is just going to continually work in a spiral without turning. So for round two, we want to find the first single crochet we made. If you look to next to where you finished, look for that two lines on the top there, and you want to make sure you're under both of those lines simultaneously. Into that stitch, once you've get your, gotten your crochet hook in there, you want to do two single crochets into that same stitch for an increased stitch. That's what an increase means. It just means two single crochets into the exact same stitch. So we also want to make sure that while we do those, we work around this tail end just to help lock it into place so that we don't have to worry about it coming loose later. So we're into that stitch under both of those loops. We have our tail end held over that. Now we want to take the end attached to the ball yarn over and pull it under that loop like that. Now going over the stitch, yarn over again and pull through two loops on the hook for our first single crochet. So that's going to be our first single crochet of our first increase in round two. We want to do another single crochet in the exact same stitch. That's going to be right where this V is pointing down. Right there is where you want to put your crochet hook. And we want to put another single crochet into that exact same stitch that we did our first one. So we're going to go into that same stitch, yarn over, pull it through that stitch, then going over, yarn over again, and pull through two. All right, and that's going to be two single crochets into our first stitch, and that's going to be our first increase. We want to do an increase into every stitch around. That's going to be six increases total, and there's two single crochets per increase. So that means we're going to go to 12 stitches at the end of this round. We want to do 12 single crochets total, two per stitch. So let's do our next increase. That's going to be in the next stitch here. So not right here, but if you move over right there, make sure you're under both of those loops. We're going to work around this tail end again for this next stitch. Yarn over, pull it through that stitch, then going over, yarn over again, and pull through two. Now we're going to do another single crochet in that same stitch. Yarn over, and pull it through, then going over, yarn over again, and pull through two. All right, that's going to be our second increase done. Again, we want six increases total. So now that we've worked around a couple of them, we can pull our tail end across. We don't need to work around it any longer. Let's go into the next stitch here. We're going to do two single crochets. So let's pull through one and going over, pull through two. There's our first single crochet for our third increase. Into the same stitch, yarn over and pull through. Going over, yarn over and pull through two. There's our third increase finished. Here's our fourth one. Single crochet one into that stitch, and then go into the same stitch again and do another single crochet. It's gonna be our fourth increase, just two more. Here's our next stitch, single crochet one, and then into the same stitch, yarn over, pull through, Yarn over, pull through two. One more into the next stitch here. Yarn over and pull it through. Going over the stitch, yarn over, pull through two. One more single crochet into that last stitch. Pull through, pull through two. All right, and that's going to be our last increase. That's six increases total and the end of round two. Now we can pull up our stitch marker just fold it over and we're going to work around it, pretend it's not there. For round three, we want to do a single crochet into the first stitch and then an increase into the stitch after that, and then repeat that process three times total. So that means we're going to do a single crochet and an increase, single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase. Don't forget, an increase means two single crochets into the same stitch. After we do those three repeats, we're going to do the opposite all the way back. We're going to do an increase and then a single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase, single crochet to get to the end of the round. But let's start our round. We want to do, again, a repeat 
in the beginning is going to be a single crochet. So there's one single crochet and then an increase after that. Here's our second stitch, one and two. So one single crochet, one increase. Let's keep repeating that. We want three of those repeats. So here's our second repeat, single crochet one and increase one. There's one single crochet and two into the same stitch. Third repeat, single crochet one, and then increase one into the stitch after, right here. One and two. Okay, so that's our three repeats done. Next, we want to repeat, uh, next to get to the end of this round, we want to do an increase and then a single crochet. So we're doing the opposite. For the first three repeats, we did single crochet increase, and then for the last three repeats, we want to do increase single crochet. This is going to create a, an interesting shape for our piece. We're, we're basically building the, the base for a very unique shape for a head. Okay, so again, our repeat from here to the end is going to be an increase into the first stitch. So there's one and two single crochets into the first stitch, and then a single crochet into the next stitch. So that's two increases into one stitch, one increase into the next stitch. So in, I mean, two single crochets in the first stitch, AKA an increase, and then one single crochet into the next stitch. Let's repeat that again. That's gonna be an increase into the next stitch, AKA two single crochets. So there's one and into the same stitch is two. And then a single crochet into the stitch after right here. Just one. Now one more of those repeats and increase into the next stitch here will be one and two into the same stitch and then one single crochet into the stitch after right here. One. All right. Now you should have 18 stitches around and that is going to be the end of round three. You should have 18 stitches around. Again, if you want to count your stitches, all you have to do is count the V's along the edge of your border. Okay, so now we're on to round four. For round four, we want to do eight single crochets and then two increases in a row and then eight more single crochets to get to the end of the round. So let's start by doing eight single crochets. So that means one single crochet for the next eight stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, there's six, seven, and eight. That'll be the last single crochet. Next, we want to do an increase into the next stitch. In fact, we want to do two increases in a row. That means two single crochets into the next two stitches. So let's do our first increase into the next stitch. That's one and two single crochets into the same stitch. And then into stitch after that right here, we want to do another two single crochets. So there's one into the same stitch, two. Okay, so that's two increases in a row. Now to finish up this round, we want to do eight more single crochets to get to the end of the round. So we just want to do a single crochet into the next eight stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, there's five, six, seven, and this will be our eighth single crochet. You can see our head starting to come together. See how we're making kind of, it's kind of going out here. That's going to create a little, a little nose for us, a little snout. All right, we can pull our stitch marker up like that. And now we're on to round five. For round five, we want to do nine single crochets and then two increases and then nine single crochets to the end. So it's basically the same as our round four, except now we're doing an additional single crochet before and after our increases. So there's one, two, three, four, and I'm gonna kind of start speeding it up now, five, six, or seven, eight, and nine. So there's our nine single crochets. Next, we want to do two increases, one increase into the next two stitches. So one per stitch. That means two single crochets into one stitch for an increase. So let's do our first of our two increases. 
right here, we want two single crochets in the same stitch. So there's one and two in the same stitch. And now another increase after that. One and two. Okay, so there's our two increases in a row. Next up, we want to do nine more single crochets to get to the end of this round. Nice and easy, just nine single crochets. One, two, three, four, there's five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay. That's going to be the end of round five. You should have 22 stitches around now if you'd like to count your stitches. Now we're going to go on to round 10. For round 10, we're going to fold our stitch marker over, and this time we're going to do 10 single crochets and then two increases and then 10 single crochets to get to the end of the round. So that's just one additional single crochet, just like how we added one single crochet for round five. Now in round six that we're on right now, we want to do 10 single crochets. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's nine and 10. And now we can do our two increases in a row. So here's our first increase. That's two single crochets in one stitch. One and two. And then one more increase after that right here will be one and two. Now we can do 10 more single crochets to get to the end of round six. So that's one single crochet per stitch just for 10 in a row. Let's get a little bit more yarn. One, two, three, there's four and five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and here is our tenth and final single crochet for round six. You now should have 24 stitches around, and you can really see how that's really starting to make a little nose there by doing all those increases. See how it's shaping? Okay. We're going to pull our stitch marker up and work into round seven. For round seven, we have a nice break. We just need to do a single crochet into every stitch around. This is a good chance for you to count your stitches and uh, just have a nice break. So we're just doing a single crochet per stitch. That should be 24 single crochets total. Uh, and that's it. That's all you really have to do for this round. If you haven't yet, please consider liking and subscribing down below. It does help this channel a lot. Um, we do a lot of free tutorials just like this. Um, a lot of live crochet alongs and a podcast. There's a lot going on in this channel. I highly suggest you subscribe and obviously try to make uh, try to like it as well. It helps it, our channel get noticed by other crocheters. And then if you can, please share a picture of your finished pangolin with me and Sir Pearl Gray. My Instagram is at Louis Loops and his is at Sir Pearl Gray. He is a very cool amigurumi artist in general. Also, you should totally go give Philip a follow. Philip a follow. I like that. It's a little alliteration. All right. That's going to be the end of round seven. Just pull through with that one. I pulled my stitch marker up. Now we're into round eight. For round eight, we're going to do eight single crochets and then four invisible decreases in a row and then eight more single crochets to finish up this round. First up, let's do our eight single crochets and then I can show you what an invisible decrease is. So eight single crochets. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now we want to do four invisible decreases in a row. For an invisible decrease, we're going to be working into the front loops only of the next two stitches simultaneously and doing a single crochet into them. If you look at the top of your stitches, that is going to be under both loops. That's what we've been doing for this entire pattern. We've been working under both loops at the same time. However, for an invisible decrease, we only want to work under the front loop only. So only into this first one that's closest to you. We want to work under this front loop and, oops, and the next front loop at the same time. 
You want to get under both of those front loops and then do a single crochet under those front loops. And that's going to decrease this down very subtly. It's a really nice decrease. I, I really like the invisible decrease a lot. All right, so for an invisible decrease to do it with your crochet hook, the easiest way I found is to go up from the bottom of your piece, kind of angle right underneath the stitch. Make sure you're on, only into that first front loop and then poke, boop, right up. And then position your crochet hook to be under the next front loop and poke straight up. Now, once I'm under both of those front loops, we can yarn over with the end and pull it under those front loops. The easiest way to pull through is to scoop to really make sure you don't accidentally pull one of those front loops instead. Once you've pulled through those front loops and you have two loops on the hook, you can yarn over and pull through those two loops to finish that single crochet, and that will finish up the invisible decrease. So there's one invisible decrease done. We want to do four of those in a row. Let's do another invisible decrease right here. That's going to be front loop and front loop, and then a single crochet. There's one and two. All right, there's our second invisible decrease. Let's do a third invisible decrease. That's front loop and front loop, and then a single crochet. One more invisible decrease, front loop, front loop. See how I'm repositioning, and then I go up, and then our single crochet. All right, it's gonna be four invisible decreases in a row. To finish up round eight, we wanna do single a single crochet into the last eight stitches. So that's just a single crochet until we get to the end of the round. That's eight single crochets in a row. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right, and that's gonna be the end of round eight. And you should now have 20 stitches around. So if you wanna count your stitches, there should only be 20 stitches around. So we're decreasing it down now. Let's go ahead and stuff this into the center of our piece. We'll just use it as stuffing. It's just our tail end from the beginning. Look at our piece. See how it's getting closed in now? Nice. All right, now we're on to round nine. Let's pull our stitch marker up. For round nine, we're gonna do six single crochets and then another four invisible decreases in a row. So six single crochets, four invisible decreases, and then six more single crochets to get to the end of the round. So let's start by doing your six single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we want to do four invisible decreases in a row. So we're going to go front loop and front loop, and then do our single crochet. So there's one invisible decrease. We want four of those. So here's our second front loop and front loop, and then our single crochet. Really incorporate a scoop to help you get through those stitches. Here's our third invisible decrease, front loop, and only the front loop, and then single crochet. And then one last one, front loop, front loop, single crochet. It's gonna be our four invisible decreases. To finish up round nine, we wanna do single crochet into the next six stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. That's gonna be the end of round nine. You should have 16 stitches around now and you can kind of see how our head's coming together. Kind of looks like, you know, it, it looks really cool. Wait, wait till you see it finished. It looks really cool. All right. Now we're on to round 10. We'll pull our stitch marker up here. And for round 10, we wanna do two single crochets and then an invisible decrease. And we wanna repeat that process four times total. So that's two single crochets, invisible decrease, repeat of four times. Let's get that started. This is our first repeat, two single crochets, one and two, and then an invisible decrease. So that's front loop, front loop, single crochet. So that's two single crochets and an invisible decrease. There's our first repeat. Let's do our second one. Two single crochets, one, two, and then an invisible decrease. Front loop, 
front loop, single crochet. All right, a couple more. This is our third repeat, two single crochets, one, two, and then our invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. Last one, two more single crochets, and then an invisible decrease. One, and two, and then our invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. All right, and that's gonna be the end of round 10. We pull our stitch marker, I mean our, our loop out a bit here because now before we do our final round of the head and sew it closed, we want to add our eyes and our nose into our piece. Now the first thing I think um, in, the, in the pattern that is uh, written by Sir Pro Gray, he actually says to put the eyes in first. The eyes go in between round six and seven, about 14 stitches apart. However, I think it might be easier to sew on the nose before we do the eyes, simply because I think it'll be a little um, easier to tell where to put the eyes. So first we want to grab just a little bit of brown yarn. You don't need very much. You just need like that much. We're just gonna embroider on a little tiny nose in the center of our face. And the nose is gonna go directly in the center of the face. So if we look here, we wanna first off, we wanna put it in between uh, below round seven. So I'm gonna hold it upside down and we're gonna count up from the bottom. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's going to be right here, I believe. Right like that. Actually, no, one up right here. Yeah. So I like to go straight up through the center. And you can see our increased stitches here. If you know how to look at your stitches, oops, you can see your increased stitches. There you can see it kind of open right there. That's where our, that's where I'm coming out. If you look, see these stitches here are kind of bundled up together. Those are our increased stitches. We basically want to work in between that increased stitch and then in between that increased stitch for the nose. So you want to come up through the inside. Oops, right there. Pull it out just long enough where we have a knot or a tail so we can knot it together. And then we're going to go two over one, two into this stitch. And then I'm just going to go straight up through where we came out like that. Just like that. And then go back into it again. And then we're going to pull out through the center. And we can take both of these ends. We can pull it just a little bit tighter like that. And then we're just going to double knot these on the inside. one. I'm just going to go ahead and guide that all the way down into the base, right up against the nose, or right up against the face rather. There's one. And we're going to do another one. All right. There we go. And that's going to be our nose sewn on. Go ahead and cut the yarn and just kind of give it a little bit of extra room. Okay, now I think we can add our eyes a little bit easier once you have that nose on. Let's count on our finished one how far away the eyes are from the nose. Because I really liked where I put the eyes on this one. And they, sh they these are 14 stitches away from each other. So from the side of the nose, we went one, two, three, four, five, six. And then from this side, do we do another six? One, two, three, five, six, seven. It looks like I did seven this way and six that way. Let's try to make it six on both sides and see how that looks. So let's grab our eyes. Now, if you want a way to customize eyes, I do have a video tutorial where I teach how to customize your eyes. However, if you check out the dugong pattern or the tapir pattern in our Earth Day crochet alongs in all these collaboration patterns, I do a really interesting technique there to make um, eyes with white felt around the outside. It kind of just helps it. Um, add just a little bit of, of flair to the eye. All right, so we're gonna count over from the nose. One, two, three, four, five, six, right here. And we'll take our eye, place it right in between. And I'm not gonna lock it into place yet because we wanna make sure the other eye, it looks equally as good. So over from the other side, 
one, two, three, four, five, six will be right here. Let's see how that looks. That looks pretty good. I like it because you can still see he's looking at you when you're looking straight on him. All right, now I'm going to take this little locking mechanism here. And on the inside, we're going to just place it right over the end of that plastic eye and just pop it on like so. And we'll do that on this other side as well. There we go. Okay. And that's our eyes and nose sewn on. Kind of looks like a little mouse head. I like it. All right, let's keep crocheting along. We only have one more round for the head. For round 11, we'll pull our stitch marker up. And our final round of the head, we're gonna do an, a single crochet into the first stitch and then an invisible decrease after that. And you wanna repeat that process four times total. So that's a single crochet, invisible decrease, four times in a row. Let's do our first one, single crochet one, and then invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, and then single crochet. Before I get too much further, maybe we should stuff it just a little bit because I know how difficult it is to stuff when it's a little sewn closed more. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little bit of stuffing in just to save us a little bit of effort in a second. I'm also gonna take my tail ends from the nose and stuff that in as well. All right, let's keep going around. Again, that repeat is, is one single crochet, one invisible decrease. We want four of those repeats. Let's do our second repeat. We just did our first. Let's do our second one. Single crochet one, invisible decrease one. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. There's our second repeat. Let's do our third. Single crochet one. And then front loop. See how I'm pinching it like this to get a better grip on my piece and get my stitches in place. There's my invisible decrease. We have one more, single crochet one. And then our final invisible decrease, front loop, front loop, single crochet. Okay. To finish up our head, all we need to do is cut the yarn. You only need a little bit of an end because we're just gonna sew it closed and pull it all the way through. Then we can pull our stitch marker out like that and take our stuffing and let's stuff our head up a little bit before we sew it closed. You don't need too much stuffing, just enough to make sure that it's not like deflated. I always say try not to stuff it too much because you can start to see your stitches or your stuffing through your stitches and it just doesn't look good. I, I, I very much think don't overstuff it if you can avoid it. Is that good? Let's add just a little tiny bit more. There we go. Okay. To finish up the head, let's sew it closed. You want to take our tail end here and thread it onto our needle and then sew it closed. To sew closed, we're just going to take our needle and go through the front loops only of all the stitches around. This is the easiest way I find to sew closed. Just take our, our needle, thread it onto the end, go through the front loop only like that. And then we're just going to do that for all of the stitches. So there's one and two, three, there should be eight. There's four, five, six, seven, one more, eight. Now we can hold right at the end where that end is coming out and pull it tight and it should close the end up. Now we can take this needle, go back through the center and come out on the back just right on the back of the head, like right there. 
It's important to go in the back of the head just so it's easier to sew this head onto the body in a little bit once we make our body. All right, so that's going to be the head of our pangolin done. Now we can work on the body. Okay, so for the body of our pangolin, we're gonna be using our, our uh, jute yarn again for this entire body. And I'm gonna just start with a magic loop. It's gonna be the exact same start as our head. In fact, round one is gonna be the exact same as the, um, as the head. And for our body here, we do want to stuff it as we go. That's just something I want to say um, before I get going, just because it's nice to know. All right, so we're going to start round one by single crocheting six times into the magic loop, just like how we did round one of the head. So I'm just going to go ahead and get that started right away. That, again, is six single crochets into the magic loop. There's four, five, and six. Before I pull it tight, let's grab our same blue yarn and use it as a stitch marker. I'm just gonna go straight through the center of the magic loop and then take our tail end here and just pull it nice and tight to close up that center. We're gonna fold that stitch marker over like that. And there we go. Okay, so let's continue on to round two of the body. For round two of the body, we're going to do two single crochets and then an increase and repeat that two times total. So that's just going to be two repeats of that. It's going to be really a quick pat, a quick round. Now make sure that you work around this tail end for your first two stitches of your round two. We're going to start by getting into our first stitch. Sometimes that can be hard to, oops, sometimes we can have a hard time getting into that first stitch, but there we go. So we want to do a single crochet into the first two stitches. So here's our first one. We're gonna have this tail end over, yarn over with the end attached to the ball, and do our first single crochet. So there's one, and then one into the next stitch. So one single crochet in the first stitch, one single crochet into the next stitch. After you do those two, we can ignore that tail end. Now after doing those two single crochets, we wanna do an increase into the third stitch right here. So that means two single crochets into the same stitch. So there's one, and into the same stitch, two. All right, that's our repeat. We've done one of those repeats. Let's do our second of that. So we're gonna repeat that again, two single crochets, one, and oopsies, don't wanna work around that blue yarn. There's two, and then an increase into this last stitch right here. One, and two. All right, pull our stitch marker up. That's gonna be the end of round two. You should now have eight single or eight stitches around at the end of round two there. For rounds three and four, so that's two rounds total, three and four, two rounds, we just want to do a single crochet into every stitch around. So that's pretty easy. There should only be eight single or eight stitches per round, and we just want two rounds of just single crochets. So we're just going to single crochet around eight stitches per round. That's going to be 16 stitches total for your two rounds. So that's rounds three is, has eight and round four has eight. All right, and that's gonna be the end of round three. Pull our stitch marker up. Now we're on to round four, another round of just single crochets. Okay, just a few more here. Get a little bit more yarn. one, just a couple more stitches. Doop. Two more. There's one and two. All right, and that's gonna be the end of round four and our two rounds of single crochets. Now we can pull our stitch marker up and I'm actually gonna do a couple things here. First off, we're gonna pull our stitch marker up and untangle it from this tail end. We're also gonna take this tail end and I'm just gonna stuff it into the piece so we don't have to see it and accidentally work around it or something. So I'm just taking the back of my crochet hook and I'm stuffing our piece with that extra thread. Okay. We're gonna take our, let's take our tail end and fold it over, or I mean our stitch marker and fold it over. All right, now we're on to round five. 
For round five, we want to do three single crochets and then an increase repeated two times total. That's going to bring you up from eight stitches to ten stitches. So that's three single crochets. One, two, and three. And then our increase. That's going to be four and five. And let's repeat that one more time. Three single crochets and then an increase. One, two single crochets, three, and then an increase into our last stitch right here. One and two into the same stitch. That'll be the end of round five. Pull our stitch marker up. Now we're on to round six. And for rounds six and seven, two rounds in a row, another two rounds of just single crochets around. There should be 10 stitches per round. So I'm just gonna go ahead and really quickly just do those two rounds of all single crochets around. And if you haven't yet, make sure to check out Sir Pearl Gray on Instagram. Um, I think I already said that, but it really, he's, he's a very talented amigurumi artist. We have a lot of patterns on our website that are actually his patterns. So if you want to look at more of his patterns that we have, um, there is a pattern for, uh, by the way, I'm on round seven now, our second round of single crochets. Um, we have a pattern for a bell bag from Animal Crossing. That is really cute, um, as well as a bunch of different animals. He actually did one endangered creature from for last year's Earth Day crochet along as well um, for a black rhino. That was so cute. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. In fact, he used, uh, I think that was the first time I've seen him use a stitch called the bean stitch, which we're going to be using um, later on in this video when we make the legs. All right, so that's going to be the end of round seven and our two rounds of single crochets. Pull our stitch marker up and continue on to round eight. For round eight, we're going to do four single crochets and then an increase repeated two times. So it's one. Oops. Make sure you're only under the loops from one side of your piece. There's two and three. And we want four single crochets. So there's four and then our increase after that. Four single crochets and then an increase. One and two in the same stitch for our increase. Let's do that one more time. That's four single crochets and then an increase. One, oops, two, three, four, and then an increase one and two all right and that's going to be the end of round eight now we're on to round nine we can pull our stitch marker up there you should have 12 stitches around if you want to count your stitches for round nine this is actually going to be a good opportunity for you to count your stitches because for round nine we just want to do a single crochet into every stitch around so that's a nice and easy round of just single crochets all the way around and there should be 12 stitches total. So just a single crochet. That's all you gotta do. Nice and easy. Okay, just two more. One and two. There we go. That'll be the end of round nine. Let's pull our stitch marker up. Now we're on to round 10. For round 10, we're gonna do two single crochets and then an increase and repeat that process four times total. So that's two single crochets, one, two, and then our increase after that, three and four. And we wanna repeat that four times total. So let's do our second repeat, one, two, and then three and four. There's our second repeat. Here's our third. One, two, three, and four. 
One more repeat. One, two, and then one more, three, and four. All right, and that should bring you up to 16 stitches around. So you should have 16 stitches now around all the, the edge there. Pull our stitch marker up, and now we're on to round 11. For round 11, we want to do three single crochets and then an increase repeated four times around. So it's the same as the last round, but one additional single crochet between increases. So that's one, two, and three, and then our increase, one and a two. Let's do that. That's our first repeat. We want four of those repeats total. So there's one, two, and three, and then our increase after that one and a two. There's our second repeat. We want two more. And this should bring you up to 20 stitches around. So there's one, two, three, and then our increase. One and two. One more of those repeats to get to the end of this round. One, two, three, and then our final increase right here. One, and two. All right. That's going to be the end of round 11. You should have 20 stitches around now. We'll pull our stitch marker up and we're going to continue on to round 12. For round 12, 13, 14, and 15. That's four rounds in a row. 12, 13, 14, 15. We just want to do a single crochet into each stitch. So that's just going to be four rounds of just single crochets all the way around. So a nice, easy, rounds of just single crochets all the way around for four rounds in a row. So I'm going to go ahead and make these four rounds and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, that's going to be the end of round 15 and our four rounds of single crochets. We can pull our stitch marker up. Before I continue, I do want to stuff it a little bit because like I said, you want to stuff as you're going here. So we're just going to take a little bit of stuffing and make sure it's all the way down at the tail. You don't need very much though. That's pretty good. All right. Now for round 16, we want to do eight single crochets and then two invisible decreases and then eight more single crochets to get to the end of the round. So it's pretty easy. This is again round 16. So that's eight single crochets. One, two, three, there's four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now we want to do two invisible decreases in a row. Again, an invisible decrease, you're going to go front loop, front loop, single crochet. So there's one invisible decrease. Let's do another one. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. There we go. Now to finish up round 16, that's just eight more single crochets, one into the next eight stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and here's our eighth and final single crochet. Push stitch marker up. It's gonna be the end of round 16. For round 17, nice easy round just single crochets all the way around. So there's just gonna be 18 single crochets total, one into each stitch all the way around. And again, here's my plea again, please like and subscribe down below if you haven't already. And make sure to share a picture of your pangolin with us. I wanna see. Also, what kind of endangered creatures do you wanna see us make next month? Actually, that's a great question. Let us know in the comments, what kind of endangered creatures would you like to see next year for next year's um, Earth Day crochet along? Because we're gonna do it again next year. That'll be the end of round 17. We have 18 single crochets all the way around. All right, we can pull our stitch marker up. We have one more round for our body. For round 18, you want to do seven single crochets and then two invisible decreases and then seven more single crochets to get to the end of the round. A pretty easy one. So that's going to be seven single crochets. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, and seven, and then our invisible decrease. So we want one invisible decrease and two invisible decreases. So two in a row after those seven single crochets. And then seven more single crochets to get to the end of our final round here. So two, three, four, five, six, and here's our final one, seven. All right, that's gonna be the end of our body. The, to fully finish it up, we want to just slip stitch into the next stitch. For a slip stitch, since I haven't shown you that yet, go into the next stitch, yarn over, and pull it through, and then pull that loop through the loop on the hook, like that. This just makes it a little easier to sew onto the head, which we're about to do. Now you can cut the yarn. You want long enough end just to sew it onto the, the head. That's probably long enough. And then we want to take all these stitch markers and pull them all out. I'm going to start from the bottom right here. Just start pulling them up. I think. It's kind of locked in there for some reason. There we go. Let's go up a few rounds. And then out. There we go. All right. The next thing we want to do is stuff it fully. So we want a little bit more stuffing here. And just a little bit more like that. That's pretty good. We don't want to overstuff it. We want it to be somewhere in between over and under stuffed. Actually, I'm going to pull that one out. I'm going to really try to get a little bit more stuffing into the very bottom of, our, of it too. There we go. All right, so that's gonna be the body made. Next up, we want to sew the body to the head. And you specifically wanna sew it like this, so that the end, see how it's got, see how the body has got one side that's kind of flat and then one side that's kind of got a hump to it? If I turn it around, you can see it's doing the opposite way. You want it so that the flat side is on the underside of the head, actually. So like that. So it's flat against the end. And that's gonna just help him so he lays down flat. All right, so we wanna sew this head onto this body. The easiest way I find to do that is first thread this end coming out of the head. And then go straight into the body. And we're gonna come straight out through somewhere on the back there. This is just gonna help us keep the head in place as we sew it together. Next, we can thread the other end the end attached to the tail end of the body here. And then we're gonna just hold it into place, our head into place, and we're gonna sew together our little worm here. It does kind of look like a worm, right? All right, so we're gonna hold it together there, and I'm just gonna start sewing it together. To sew something on, all we need to do is find our first stitch. I like to just hold it in place, find a stitch that's near to where this end's coming out. That's gonna be like right there and come out through the next stitch over right there. That's just We're just kind of like looking for where all of our stitches are gonna go. Actually, that looks like that stitch is the next stitch over. And then we're gonna go, gonna go through the next stitch on the body, and then back in through the same stitch on the head where you came out. We're just gonna hold it really nice and close in through the body, and then let's go up through the next stitch over right here. Don't forget, you really want it to hold it in place. We don't want it to come loose. And we'll go through the next stitch on the body, the same stitch on the head, out through the next stitch on the head. And actually, should we go up here? Or now, we'll go right up to here. Just whatever is the adjacent stitch to the body stitch. Hold it in place, next stitch on the body, same stitch on the head, next stitch on the head. And I'm just kind of going up the body now. Body. All right, let's see how that's going. It's looking pretty good. Once you're up here on the head, we're just gonna basically go across. Body, same stitch on the head, next stitch on the body. 
Oh, and I should have mentioned uh, the head. You want to make sure that the, this is the top of the head and this is the bottom of the head. Um, yeah, should have mentioned that earlier. Head, and then let's go to, actually, let's just hold it in place. Yeah, we'll go with this one, this one, and this one there. Okay, and then this stitch, this stitch, and then out the next one. And let's hold it in place and make sure that it's still lining up right, exactly how we want it to. We will stuff it a little bit more before we finish sewing it closed, so don't forget about that as well. There we go. Here's our next one. And yeah, I think we can start working our way down now. I just want to make sure that it's similarly sewn on on both sides. So like how many stitches are between the eye? You know, one, two, three, looks like. There's a third. Yeah, there's two stitches between. So there's one, two. Yeah, we're, we're doing fine. make sure that we count our stitches however so there's one two three four five more stitches to work with we got one two three i think we're good actually i think we're on track before i go any further let's stuff it just a little bit more with stuffing just so we don't have a body that's like a little loose just like that maybe a little bit more just a touch There we go. Okay, let's count one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Yeah, perfect. Okay, just a few more stitches. When we get to the end here, so we're about to. One. And the last one right here. When we get to this end part, we want to go into the body. And actually, yeah, we'll go into the body. And then we want to turn our, once we're in the head again, turn our needle around. And try to come out through where that other tail end is. Right there. It's kind of tough to do. But... It's going to be nice because we'll have something to sew it onto up here. So once you have these two together, we can double knot it on the inside. We'll go one and two. We can cut it nice and close. There we go. We can save these little tail ends to sew it closed later. And we'll just stuff that knot back into our body. Okay, so you want to really make sure that it's sewn on like that. So we have a little worm. There's the bottom. There's the side. There's the top. And there's the side again. Okay. Next up, let's go ahead and put this guy to the side. We'll come back to him in just a second. Next up, we can work on the back legs. And the back legs are actually not too tough. They're pretty quick to make. However, we will be making a kind of a weird stitch here. So this is going to be all done in our jute yarn. We're going to start with a magic loop. In fact, round one is going to be the exact same as the head and the body. Pull our stitch marker a little tighter there. For round one, we want to do six single crochets into the magic loop, just like how we did on the head and the body. So that's pretty easy. Now that we've done that a few times, just six single crochets into the magic loop. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and six. We'll grab our little stitch marker. I don't think we necessarily need it because there's only six rounds in the legs. However, you know, it's not going to hurt, I guess. There we go. And we're going to do this exactly how we did our other, our, our body. We're going to hold our tail end over there, fold over with the stitch marker, 
and continue into the next part. Let's pull our tail end a little tighter to close that end. All right, now we're on to round two of the back legs. For round two, I believe this is the exact same as the body as well. We wanna do two single crochets and then an increase repeated twice. So yeah, that is the exact same. So that's two single crochets, one, and I'm working around the tail end for the first two, one and two, and then hide that tail end. Don't cut the tail end. We're gonna need it to sew onto the body later, but one, two, and then do an increase after that, three, and four and then repeat that one more time two single crochets and then an increase one more time one two and then our increase three and four okay now you should have eight single crochets around we'll pull our stitch marker up there and now we're on to round three for round three, we're gonna do a new stitch called the bean stitch. And this is, uh, I think, a Sir Pearl Grey original. Correct me if I'm wrong, Philip, but I'm pretty sure it's a Sir Pearl Grey original stitch. Basically, we wanna do a single crochet into our first stitch. Just one single crochet to get started. And then we're going to do a bean stitch into this next one here. For a bean stitch, we're gonna go into the stitch, yarn over and pull through. And then going over the stitch, yarn over again, and then go into the same stitch you just went into, and then yarn over another time and pull that loop through. Now you should have four loops on the hook, one at the very end here, and then three really bunched together. Now all you have to do is yarn over and pull through all the loops on the hook. If you might, you might have a hard time getting through all these loops, really scoop it. If you scoop it, it'll help you get through all those stitches. This is gonna create a little tiny toe bean at the, bo at the bottom of your foot. All right, so you wanna do a bean stitch and then a single crochet after that. There we go. So bean stitch, single crochet, and we're gonna repeat that three times in a row. So bean stitch, single crochet, there's our first repeat. Let's do our second repeat, another bean stitch. Again, that's go into the stitch, pull a loop through, yarn over, go into the stitch again, pull another loop through, yarn over and pull through all four loops on the hook. And now, a single crochet after doing a bean stitch. Okay, one more repeat, a bean stitch, yarn over, pull through, go over it, yarn over again, into the stitch, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through all the loops. And then one more single crochet after that bean stitch. And then to finish up round three of the legs, we're gonna do one single crochet into our last stitch right here. Okay. Let's fold our stitch marker over and move on to round four. For rounds four and five, two rounds in a row, we just need to do a single crochet into every stitch all the way around. That's it. Just a single crochet around for two rounds. There's gonna be eight stitches per round. And really make sure you get in the, to the top of these bean stitches. So eight stitches per round for just two rounds. And it's a pretty small piece now. So we're gonna work right into the tippity tops like this. Make sure you're under both of those loops and keep going. One more. All right, and that's gonna be the end of round four. We're gonna do one more round of that. Fold over our stitch marker and then do eight single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, two more, seven, this is our last one, eight. All right, and that's gonna be the end of round five. For round six, our final round, I'm actually not gonna pull our stitch marker over because this is our last round and I'd like it on the outside so I can easily pull it out. For round six, we're gonna do three single crochets and then an increase repeated two times, which is gonna bring us up from eight stitches to 10 stitches around. So that's gonna be three single crochets, one, 
two. three, and then our increase, one and two. And then we'll repeat that one more time, three single crochets, get a little bit more yarn, one, two, three, and then our increase, one and two. All right, now you should have 10 stitches around. To finish up the back legs, we're gonna slip stitch into the next stitch right here, yarn over and pull through, and then pull that through the loop on the hook for a slip stitch. And now we can cut the yarn. You don't need a very long end. We just need this long enough so we can sew it onto the body and pull it all the way through. And then we're gonna take this tail end and just pull that all the way through, or the stitch marker rather, pull it all the way through. And I like to flatten the bottom of the foot a little bit by pushing it in. Okay, so this is our little foot. You wanna make sure that you make two of these back legs. So you have to make two of these. So I'll go ahead and make our second back leg. And when I come back, we can, um, uh, let's see, I guess we can sew it onto our body. Yeah, we can either, we can sew it onto the body after that. It's gonna be sewn on just like that. Okay, so let me go ahead and make another one and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so I have my two little toe, my two little legs here, little toe beans and stuff. Now let's sew these onto the body. The best way to sew this onto the body is there's gonna be two ends here coming out. We wanna start by threading the inside of our leg. And we want it to sew onto the body with the toes pointing forward towards the bottom of our piece. So just towards the end of our piece right there. We want it to be on the bottom of it like that. So it's kind of like laying outside. Here is it sewn on on the finished piece. So you can see where we're sewing it is pretty much the same exact spot. All right, the way I find is easiest here is just place it where we want it and then find the center of where we have it placed and taking this center end that's threaded onto the needle already and find the center and just go in and then out through somewhere along the top, an adjacent stitch, just like that. Okay, now we can thread our other end of our leg, of our uh, tail end there, pull it a little tighter and start sewing it on. We want these little toes, they're kind of hard to see, but there are little toes there and we wanna make sure that they're facing forward and then we can just hold it in place I think a great like that it's pretty good and we're basically going to sew it on to the body the same way that we kind of sewed the head onto the um onto the body so just going to go up through an adjacent stitch let's see hold it into our placement there and just go down through the next stitch up and then out and then oops, into the body, out through the next adjacent stitch on the body. We'll just keep doing that all the way around. So down through the next stitch on the leg, into the same stitch it came out, and then out through the next stitch on the body. All right, just a few more, in through the leg, in through the body, out through the next stitch on the leg. And I'm just kind of holding in place, making sure that's where we want it. That actually might not be, that might not be where we want it. Well, yeah, it probably is. Let's pull it through and then we can count our stitches. All right, so once we've got it started to go there, we are gonna wanna stuff this up, so don't forget about that. However, let's count our stitches along the edge of the leg and try to find the adjacent stitches on the body so we don't mess it up. So that's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches on the leg left. Where this end's coming out is gonna be our first, and then where it's going in right here is gonna be our last. So we wanna count seven over. So there's one, two, let's go three, four, five, six, no, let's go maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, three, four, yeah, that works. So see how I made that little line there? 
we're going to do that in through the body or in through the leg body out through the next stitch on the body leg body and body just keeping track of where i went there we still want to have it flat on the bottom so we want to make sure that we don't like make it go too farther down so because he's not going to be standing up like that he's going to be laying down like that before i go any further though let's go ahead and stuff the leg up a little bit um we don't want to forget it really is a bummer when you sew something on and you forget oh my gosh i totally forgot to stuff it you know what i mean so let's not let's not have that happen and just go ahead and stuff it now and then keep going on the legs one two i believe it was here was the next stitch that we calculated. There's one, let's count our stitches again. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, and then three, four, right? Yes. One, all right. Okay, in through this last stitch. And we're gonna come out where our other end is coming out right here, just like that. See how it's sewn on there on the bottom. Make sure it's like we want it before we double knot it. I think that's pretty good though, I like it. Now we can go ahead and double knot this and then just one and two. We can cut it nice and close here at the bottom and use our tail or, or back of our needle to stuff it into the body. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and sew this other leg on in the adjacent so, uh, space stitches on the opposite side. So it's like this a little bit. I'm gonna try to make it a little bit more flat like that. So I'll go ahead and do that and I'll be back in just a sec. Okay, so I'm just double knotting here. Finished sewing on our second leg, and he's looking adorable. Adorable. All right. Next up, we want to start working on the front claws. So the front claws are made in two different sections. First, you make the front claw, and then you make the front arm that gets sewn onto the front claw. And let me show you what that looks like when we're going to be finished. You can see he's got these big old things here he uses uh pangolins use these to dig a lot so pangolins dig a lot of stuff so first off we want to make these front claws themselves so let's make the claws we're going to use our warm brown yarn for this and these are going to be made different than everything else because we're going to be turning after each round so we're going to start by um making a slip knot and you want a somewhat long end let's go with like Actually, you don't need that long of an end. We'll go with that. So a little end like that. And we're going to make a slip knot. Oh, sorry. If you don't know how to do a slip knot, you want to make a loop over itself with the tail end over the long end. Pinch it at the connection and then fold that over the longer end. And then go in between the loop and grab that long end and then pinch the tail and pull it like so. That's going to create a slip knot, which you can then put on your crochet hook and then pull it and it'll tighten around the crochet hook. But when you pull this tail end, nothing will happen. All right, so once you have it on the crochet hook, we wanna start by chaining six times with your warm brown yarn. So we're gonna yarn over and chain six. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So this is gonna be just a bunch of steps. There's not really any rows or rounds here um, because it's all made in like one long piece that we're gonna sew together. So for step one, we're gonna skip our first chain and slip stitch into the next chain. So we're gonna skip this first one and start in the next one right here and slip stitch. We're gonna pull through and pull through for slip stitch. Then we're gonna single crochet into the next four chains all the way down to the end. So single crochet four, one into each chain. There's one, 
two, three, and four. All right, now we can yarn over and chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. See that long chain of seven? Now we can skip our first chain and slip stitch into the next one. So right here, slip stitch one, and then single crochet all the way down five. Single crochet into each chain all the way down. One, two, three, four, and five. All right, that's step two done. Now we can chain four, one, two, three, four, skip the first chain, slip stitch into the next one right here, pull through, and oops, pull through, and then single crochet into the next two stitches, or into the next two chains rather, one, and two. Now we want to do that again. We're going to chain four again. One, two, three, four. Skip the first chain. Slip stitch into the next one right here. And then single crochet into the next two chains. One, two. Now we're going to chain seven again. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Skip the first chain, slip stitch into the next one, and then single crochet all the way down five times to get to the end of the, of the chains. So five single crochets. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now we're going to chain, uh, chain six more times. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Skip the first chain and slip stitch into the next one right here. And then single crochet into the remaining four chains. One, two, three, and four. Okay, now we wanna chain one, and we wanna cut the yarn. You wanna leave a pretty long end because we're gonna sew this together, and I'll show you how that's gonna be done. But you want a pretty long end, like that actually might not even be long enough, but that's probably good. And we're just gonna pull that all the way through after doing that last chain. And now we're gonna have this interesting piece here. See, we got this like weird little kind of star-shaped piece. Or, yeah, kind of weird piece like that. What we wanna do is we wanna fold this over itself and line up each of these ends so that they line up with the corresponding length uh, spike. See? Now we can take our darning needle and thread onto our long end with our darning needle. Okay, this is a very interesting way to do this, I have to say. I've, I've never made something quite like this before. All right, basically what you wanna do is line these up and have them folded in half like so, and we're going to sew these together using a whip stitch into all of the stitches around, all the corresponding stitches. So we're just gonna hold it together. We're gonna do a whip stitch into this. We're gonna go over into the corresponding stitch and then out through the corresponding stitch on the other side. And you wanna go through both loops on one side and through the chain on the other, like that. Ignore this tail end. In fact, just let it loose there just like that. We're just gonna keep sewing together the corresponding stitches. 
One, two. It's actually, it's not too tough. It's just like, it can be a little bit tedious, but it's really not difficult. Corresponding stitch out through this last one here. I'm going to try to make sure I'm under both of those loops of that last one. that and then go through this side and now I'm on to both loops of this side of the claw and out through the chain side on the opposite corresponding spike but yeah we'll just keep going around see and that's going to create a little point in a in a thicker spike here and then we're going to sew this onto the front arms, which we're going to make after we're done sewing these two together. I'll go ahead and finish these claws, just continuously sewing together like this. You can see I'm coming to the end of the first one. When you get to the end of it, just keep finding the next one over. So there's our first one sewn together. Now this one, line it up into the next chain, out through the next stitch. And now we can start working up the next claw. Okay, I'll go ahead and finish sewing this together. I'm just going to continuously go around and I'll show you how to finish this claw up once we've sewn all these pieces in. Okay, so I'm at the end here and you can see I've sewn these all together. And the next thing we want to do is we actually want to um, sew these together so that they kind of connect like that. So we want them to be all into like a little cluster of claws. Cluster of claws. There's another band name. Okay. <laughs> Basically how to do that is I'm just going to go through the first claw that we made right here. Just all the way through it to the other side of it. Like that. And then we're going to just take these two ends and double knot them together. You can also sew this even more so together if you want to, if you really want to make it like so they're hugging each other. But you don't really have to. You don't really have to. All right, so we're going to go ahead and just double knot these together. One. And... There we go. Now I'm not going to cut these ends. We're actually going to use this to uh, stuff into the arm, and we're going to sew this into the uh, to, to the end of the hand once we make that. Which is now we're going to be making our front arm now. Okay. So for your front arm, we're going to start with a magic or with uh, our jute yarn. It's going to be made all in jute, and you want to have a pretty long end, about like that long and that's because this is going to be what's used to sew that claw onto the arm we're going to go ahead and make another slip knot just like how we did on the other arm get our crochet hook in there and now we want to chain 10 using our jute yarn one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten okay now we're going to find our first chain that we made right here Put your crochet hook in that and we're going to yarn over with the end attached to the ball pull it through and pull it through the loop on the hook to make a slip stitch and that'll make a little ring so we got a little ring now okay next up for round one of the front arm we just want a single crochet into all these chains around and into the slip stitch that you just made we're not going to work into the one that you just slip stitched into but into the one after it right here Right there, we want a single crochet into that 
chain. And we want to work around this tail end as we do so. So there's one, pull it tighter, just keep going around. Here's the next one, two, one into e every one of those chains, three, and I'm just going to work around that for the first three chains and then I can just let it loose and just keep going. Four, five, and six, seven, eight, and nine. And then the last one is going to be right here, right there, single crochet into that last one for 10. That'll be the end of round one of our front arms. I'm just going to pull that tighter. Okay. For round two of the front arms, we're going to just single crochet into each stitch around. You can work into both loops. We're going to find our first one right here. And we're just going to single crochet into all of the stitches around. There should be 10 single crochets total to get to the end of this round. So there's one, two. I'm going to keep count because three, four, because we're not using a stitch marker, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and here's our last one, 10. Okay, it's gonna be the end of round two. You can see, got a little ring thing here. For round three, we wanna do three single crochets and then an invisible decrease after that. So into the next stitch right here, three single crochets, one, two, three, and then an invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. And we're gonna repeat that one more time, three more single crochets, and then another invisible decrease. One, two, three, and then an invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. All right. Finish this up, we're gonna go into the next stitch here and do a slip stitch. Pull through and pull through. We want a somewhat long end. This is gonna to be to sew onto the body with. And then we're just gonna pull this tail end all the way through. And that's gonna be how to technically crochet the front claw. And I know it looks really weird, but we're gonna sew that claw into the very end right here. So, how do we do that? We're gonna take our, our crochet hook, go into the center, and we're gonna grab this long end Yarn over and just pull that through the very center. That's how we're going to start. Then we're going to take our claw and we're going to take these two ends. We're going to go out through the bottom of the front claw, our front arm. Yarn over with these two ends and pull those through the inside. And that way we can pull it into place. And basically we want to just sew that, this, into here. It's kind of hard to sew it in, like to actually visualize it there. So what I like to do is just take our tail end of our jute yarn and just start sewing it on and then work it into the piece as we go. So we're gonna pull that a little bit tighter there. And really we can start basically anywhere. Let's get a little tighter there. We can start basically anywhere on the outside of this claw, but we're basically zigzagging and, and sewing it on. So I'm gonna go through one side of this claw and then out through the next stitch over. And when I come out, I'm gonna go out through the next stitch on the arm. Like that. And then down, out, in through the next stitch there, out through the next stitch, corresponding stitch on the claw. It's kind of like Kind of like our, not really guessing, but just using the adjacent stitches from that. Then out through, after you've gone through the claw, we're gonna go through the next stitch on the arm. Go like right down here. Go 
That claw. All right. Then through the next stitch on the arm, corresponding stitch on the claw. It's really like, I'm gonna pinch this together and I'm really gonna try to shove this bit in there. Does not wanna go in, but that's okay. We'll sew it in anyhow eventually. Next stitch, and then next place on the claw, and then out through the next claw. Right, like that. And then out through the next place on the arm. And then in through the next stitch on the arm. <laughs> Next place along the outside of the claw. Out through the arm. Arm. Claw. Claw. We're coming around, we're almost out to the other side now. Out through the arm. Ooh. There we go. And then in through the next stitch on the arm. I'm gonna go in through the claw and then down directly through the bottom. Okay, now I'm gonna make sure that this gets put together a little bit more so that it's, it's held together a little bit more. And if you want, we can sew it closed as well, but that is gonna be how to sew the front arm together. You can see how it's got a little front arm there. Now we're going, you wanna make two of these arms and then we're gonna sew this just like this onto the front of our pangolin, just like that. Very interesting pattern. You can see how it's like, whoa, what's going on there, you know? All right, so to sew this onto the body, it's actually not too complicated. Basically what we wanna do is just do the same way that we did with the legs. The first thing I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna take this tail end uh, from the very center and move it out of the way. And we're gonna take our back of our crochet hook and I'm gonna stuff the arm up with the extra, extra brown threads of yarn. So I'm just kind of, I actually don't need to use my crochet hook for that. I'm just gonna use my finger and stuff it up. And that way we have some stuffing and it's just kind of like easier. Just kind of like easier. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna sew this onto the body. First, I've got the inside one threaded on. We want to, we're gonna sew this one just between the uh, between the head and the leg, the back leg, so like that, so that there's like one or two stitches between the arm and the leg, so like something like like that. You do want the littlest claw facing forward because that's kind of like the thumb claw, like that. And then we'll sew on the secondary claw on the adjacent side. So I'm actually just gonna go ahead, since I've already showed you how to sew things on, I'm just gonna go ahead and just do this. We're gonna go the right through where we think the center is gonna be. That's gonna be like right there-ish. We'll go up through somewhere on the body. We lost the end, unfortunately. There we go. Pull it in place. Line it up how we want it. And then just start, I'm just gonna start sewing it close or sewing it to the body with this other end just like how we did with the leg. Hold it in place. Figure out exactly where, I want it to be like right up against the edge of the neck. Pretty much in the same stitches that you sewed the body to the head. So I'm gonna start right there. Leg stitch, leg stitch. Let's go up one more. And then I'm just gonna keep doing this. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this off camera because it's gonna be a little bit easier for me 
and you don't need to see me sewing this on. If you have any questions, obviously let me know in the comments. Um, we also have a Discord channel, actually, if you haven't known about that. We have a Discord channel and a Facebook group for Club Crochet. So if you're looking for extra help, those are two really good um, places to go to. And they there's always people there able to help out if I'm not also on there. But I am on there very often. Both places. Okay. But yes, I'll go ahead and sew this together. I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so I've finished sewing on the arms. You can see them sewn on there. We got our legs sewn on, arms sewn on, and he is looking great. He's just looking a little naky. So we need to add his scales on the back. Now the scales are, I'm going to give you a heads up, this is the definitely the hardest part of this pattern, um, is to make the scales. Uh, it's just like a little tedious and hard to sew on, but they are pretty cool looking. So let's just get going. We're gonna start by using our brown yarn here. And we're gonna start with a slip knot, just like how we did our claws and stuff. And we're gonna start by chaining five. So into the, into the slip knot, we wanna chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. That's going to be our five chains done. All right. So for the scales, um, we're going to be it, the start of the scales are their own thing. And then <laughs> and then once we get to row four, we have to continuously do like this little pattern. Well, let's just get going for row one of the scales. Um, we're going to call these rows, not rounds, because we're going to be turning after each row. For row one, we want to skip our first chain. And into the second chain, we want to do right here, into the second chain right there, we want to start by doing a single crochet. So go ahead and we'll do a single crochet. And then into that same chain, you want to do a double crochet. For a double crochet, we're going to yarn over, go into the same stitch right here, yarn over again and pull through, yarn over, pull through just two loops on the hook, one and two, and then yarn over again and pull through the last two loops, one and two. That's going to be how to make a double crochet. And then you want to chain one. And then we'll skip. We'll go, we'll, we won't work into this same chain that we just worked into, but into the next chain right here, we'll do a slip stitch. So we're going to go into that chain, yarn over, pull through, and pull through the loop on the hook. Like that. Now these are going to be our little scales, basically. And we're going to be making these scales very often in this, uh, in our scales. Okay, so after you do that slip stitch, we're gonna do another one of those scales. We're gonna repeat that process again into this next stitch right here. We're gonna do a single crochet, one single crochet, and then a double crochet into that same stitch. We're gonna yarn over, go into that same stitch, yarn over again and pull through, and going yarn over and pull through two, one and two, yarn over again and pull through the last two, one and two. Then chain one, and into the last chain right here, we want to do our final slip stitch. Pull through and pull through the loop on the hook. It's going to be the end of row one. Okay, we want to chain one, and then now we're going to turn our piece 180 degrees like this, and we're going to work our second row into the other side of the chain. So basically where you worked your first stitches, we're going to work our second row's stitches into. Okay, so after doing that chain, we're going to start by half double, half double crocheting one into that same stitch that you just worked into, into that same chain. So for a half double crochet, we're going to yarn over, go into the same chain right here, yarn over again and pull through, and then yarn over again and pull through all three loops on the hook for half double crochet, one, two, and three. Okay, we're going to work around this tail end as we do this uh, next uh, group of stitches, by the way. So don't worry about it. Just pretend it's like right on top of it and just work around it. Okay, so we're going to do a half double crochet in the first stitch, in the first chain rather. Into the next chain right here, we want to do a half double crochet increase. That means two half double crochets into that same chain. And that's going to be that one right there. So we're going to yarn over, go into the next chain right here. Yarn over again and pull through. Yarn over and pull through three, all three loops. One, two, three. 
There's our first half double crochet of our half double crochet increase. Let's do another one into the same chain, yarn over, into the same stitch, yarn over and pull through, going over it, yarn over and pull through three, one, two, three. Okay, so one half double crochet, one half double crochet increase, and then we're going to uh, repeat that again. We're going to do another half double crochet and then a half double crochet increase into the last one. So let's do another half double crochet into the next chain. It's going to be right here. Our next half double crochet, just one half double crochet. And into the one after that, we want to do a final half double crochet increase. So yarn over into the last one right here, pull through, going over it, yarn over and pull through three. Now one more half double crochet into that same stitch for our half double crochet increase, yarn over into that same chain, yarn over again and pull through, and then going over it, yarn over and pull through three. Okay, that's gonna be the end of row two. We can chain one and we'll turn our piece around. Okay, for row three, we're gonna work only into the front loops only. So that means that we're gonna work into, right? Yeah, that means we're gonna work into these ones closest to us, like that. Is that right? I feel like that's right. Yeah, that's right. Okay, <laughs> sorry, I had to look at the other one. So into the stitches closest to us, let me grab a needle real quick. Okay, so into the stitches closest to us right here, that's gonna be our front loop only. We're going to work our little scale stitches into that front loop. So, after we've done our chain, we're gonna start for row three by doing a single crochet and a double crochet into this first front loop only. So first do a single crochet, then a double crochet. We're gonna yarn over, go into the same front loop only, Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, one, two. Yarn over again and pull through a final two, one, two. Then we want to chain one and then slip stitch into the next front loop only right here. Okay, so there's our little scales. We want to repeat that process three times total. So let's do our second repeat. Here's our next stitch right here. We want to do a single crochet double crochet, chain one. Then into the next stitch over here, slip stitch one. Okay, there's our second repeat. Last repeat here, next stitch. And it looks kind of like we're working into the back loop because this looks like the little V, but really if you tilt it like this, that's actually the top of the loop. So there's an important thing to, to recognize. So into the next stitch here, that's just because that's what half double crochets kind of look like. They're just kind of confusing. All right, next stitch. Last repeat, single crochet one, double crochet one, chain one, and into this last front loop only, slip stitch one. Okay, there we go. That's the end of row three. Okay, for the following even rows, all right, so that means row four, that's gonna be our next one, and row six, row eight, row 10, you get what I'm saying. Um, be sure to skip the first chain one that we're gonna do right now. So to finish up row three, actually, we need to chain one and turn. But for this next row, we're gonna work into the unused back loops only. Here you can see it right there. That's the unused back loops only. Remember how we only worked in the front loops? We wanna use these back loops to go back across with half double crochets and half double crochet increases and stuff like that. So first off, we wanna skip this first chain. And then we also wanna skip our first back loop only. That's gonna be this one right here, I believe. And then we can, uh, and then we can continue on in our piece. So all of our even rounds, or even rows rather, are gonna be done the exact same way. We're gonna skip our chain, we're gonna skip our first one, and then our last one is gonna be worked into that first chain that we made in our previous round. That's gonna be right here at the very edge of our piece. This is gonna get a lot easier as you go across, um, as you do one or two of these. Okay, so we're on row four. For row four, we've already chained one. We want to do um, 
a two half double crochets, then a half double crochet increase, and then two more half double crochets, and finally a half double crochet increase at the very end. So first two half double crochets into the unused back loops only from row two. Skip our first one here and starting in our second one right there. So we're gonna do half double crochet, half double crochet, half double crochet increase, and then half double, half double, half double increase, okay? Skip our first one, we're gonna yarn over, skip that first one, here's our second one right there. I like to really poke up from the top and then do our half double crochet. Yarn over, pull through, and then pull through three. There's one half double crochet, Here's the next one. See how I'm, I'm pinching it to really make sure those stitches are easy to see? Our next one's gonna be right here. There's our second half double crochet. And then after that, we wanna do a half double crochet increase into the next one right here. That means two half double crochets into the same stitch. So I did those two both in the same stitch there. And then two more half double crochets, one to the next two stitches. There's one. Get a little bit more yarn. Here's our next half double crochet. And to the last bit right here. So this is actually the chain one from the previous row. We wanna work into that one. It can be, kind of be hard to get into those chain ones, especially if you did it really tightly. If that's the case, use a, ne a needle and just get it under that and then pull it open like that. Kind of like stretch that stitch out a little bit and that'll help you get your crochet hook in there. We want to do a half double crochet increase into that last one right here. So that's one half double crochet and two. All right, so that's going to be the end of row four. We're going to chain one, turn our piece, and now we are on, you can see how the scales are starting to form. Now we're on to row five. For row five, we're going to do our little, uh, our little scales across into the front loops only. Remember, that's the one closest to you right here. So we're gonna do the, our repeat again. Pretty much every odd row is gonna be done doing our scales. So we're gonna do a single crochet one into the front loop only of the first one, and then double crochet into that same one. There's one and two, and then chain one. Then into the next stitch over right here. Remember, only in the front loop only, slip stitch one. And we're gonna repeat that all the way down to the end. That's gonna be uh, four repeats total. So let's go ahead and do our second repeat. Um, oh, before I get going, look at that. See, see this right here? I actually missed just one of those threads. So let's go ahead and undo that last slip stitch. And I accidentally undid the last chain. And try that one again, but make sure I'm under all of those threads. There we go. All right, let's do our second repeat. Single crochet one to the next one, double crochet one, one and two, then chain one, then into the next stitch here, front loop only, slip stitch one. Okay, and again, it looks like we're working in the back loop only because of how the half double crochet is, but if you turn it right here, you can see those are actually the top of the stitches. So if you look at the top of the stitches, here's our next one. It's single crochet one, and then double crochet one into the same stitch. One, and two, and then chain one. And then into the stitch after, right here, slip stitch one. All right, there's our third repeat of our scale. Let's do our fourth repeat. Last one, single crochet one, double crochet one, one and two, and then chain one. And then into the last one, that's gonna be right here. Try to make sure you're only under the front loop only. It's kind of hard to see it there, especially this last one, because it looks just kind of weird. If you look at it across the top here, it's gonna be this loop right there. It's kind of really hard to see it, but it's right there. And we're gonna do a slip stitch into that one. A lot of times in the scales here, you're gonna to have to use your nail to help pry open stitches. There we go. All right, and we're gonna chain one. I'm gonna try to keep this a little loose because we're gonna work into it eventually. Oh, actually, no, we're not gonna work into that. And we're gonna turn it around and now work into uh, for row six. For row six, after doing that chain, 
Again, we're going to do half double crochets across. This time it's actually pretty easy for row six. Um, we're gonna use the unused back loops only from row four. That's gonna be these ones here. And this time we're just gonna do half double crochets all the way across. It's gonna be eight half double crochets total. Um, you wanna skip your chain, that's this one. And you wanna skip your first back loop only. That's gonna be right there. So you don't wanna work into that. You actually just wanna start into the next one right here. Um, once you find that first one, Maybe you could do what I just did here with the needle and then fold it in half. And then we'll do our half double crochets across. There should be eight half double crochets total. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and remember this last one is worked into that chain right here. Hard to see, hard to get to, but right there. If you don't do this, what I'm showing you right now, where you skip the first and go to the next, it kind of tilts to the right a lot, actually. So I made one of these and it was like, whoa, <laughs> it was kind of weird. So it's really important that you skip that first one so that it doesn't do that. We'll do a half double crochet into this last chain right there. Okay, so that should be eight half double crochets across. Let's chain one, turn our piece, and now we're on to row seven. For row seven, we're doing our scales back across. We're basically gonna repeat what we did in row five. So that means that we're gonna, after doing our chain, we're gonna just do our scales across four repeats total. So that's gonna be a single crochet into the first one. Remember, front loops only. Then a double crochet into that same one. Then chain one. And then slip stitch into the front loop only of the next stitch right here. Repeat it all the way across. Should be four repeats total. Okay, so let's keep repeating that. Single crochet. Double crochet into the same front loop only. Chain one. Next stitch, slip stitch. Okay, let's keep going. Single crochet one, double crochet one, chain one, and then into the next stitch, slip stitch one. Last bit, last repeat, single crochet one, double crochet one, into the same stitch and then chain one, and then into the last front loop only. Remember this is the last one that's kind of hard to see. Slip stitch one. All right. And then we'll chain one, turn around and fold our piece over. Okay, and that's gonna be the end of row seven. All right, for row eight, we're gonna do uh, half double crochets again, but we're actually gonna be decreasing down as well as we go. Um, for our decrease here, we're gonna do something called a single crochet two together, which is kind of like a half double crochet decrease, kind of a weird thing going on. So let me show you how to do that. First off, don't forget, we're skipping our chain that we just made. We're skipping our first back loop only. That's gonna be this one. And we're starting in our second one right there. We're gonna start by doing a half double crochet into the first two stitches. So two half double crochets in a row. So that's gonna be this first one here. There's one half double crochet into the first one and then one into the next one. And then we wanna do a single crochet two together. For that, we're gonna go into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. And then into the next stitch after that, yarn over again and pull through. Now you should have three loops on the hook and to finish up, we wanna yarn over and pull through all the loops on the hook like that. That's called a single crochet two together. All right, so we wanna repeat that process one more time to get to the end here. Again, that's gonna be a two half double crochets. So that's one into the next stitch and then one into the stitch after and then our single crochet two together. So here's the next one, pull a loop through and then the last one that's gonna be this weird chain at the very end that we need our nail to help pry open like that. Let's make sure we got under all that, did we? Oopsies, let's try that again. There we go. Then pull a second loop through that last chain 
and then yarn over and pull through all the chains to finish our single crochet two together. Okay, so you see how it's coming together there? And then when we fold it over, you see we got our scales on the other side. It's pretty cool, right? It's a pretty cool looking like effect. All right, so we wanna chain one, turn our piece, and then do our scales back across the other side. So we're on round nine now, and we're working the front loops only. We're gonna do our scale stitches, our single crochet, double crochet, and then chain one, and then slip stitch it into the next. This time we're only gonna repeat it three times. So one, and then double crochet one, and then chain one, and then slip stitch one, all into the front loops. There's one of our repeats, we want three total. Let's do our next one here. Single crochet, double crochet, chain one. Let's get a little bit more yarn. And then slip stitch into the next front loop only. All right, last repeat, single crochet one, double crochet one, chain one, slip stitch into the last one. And don't forget the last one is hard to get into. So we're just gonna kind of have to tilt it over and then slip stitch into that. Okay, that'll be the end of row nine. Now we can chain one, turn our piece and fold it over. And now we're on to row, row 10. For row 10, it's pretty easy. We're actually just gonna do half double crochets across. There should be six half double crochets total. We're gonna skip our first back loop only here and we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, and then our last one is gonna be into that weird chain right there for six. Yarn over. Skip that first back loop only. Here's our second back loop only. And half double crochet. And we're just gonna do that all the way across. So there's one, two, there should be six of these. Three, four, five, and then our last one's right here at the very end, like that, will be six. All right, that's gonna be the end of row 10. For row 11, we're gonna, oh, sorry, we're gonna chain one and then turn. For row 11, we're going to uh, do our, um, our scales back three repeats. It's actually gonna be the same as the row before that. So that's front loop only, we're gonna single crochet. Oops, let's make sure we're under all those loops. There we go. Single crochet one, double crochet one into the same, and then chain one. Into the next stitch here, front loop only, slip stitch. Keep going. Single crochet one, double crochet one. It's kind of fun once you get into the groove of things, you know? Once you know what you're doing and then slip stitch one. And it does make a really cool effect. It'd be really nice to like, you can make like some cool dragon scale bags and stuff probably with this. This is our last repeat, our last scale. And then chain one. And then the last front loop only is gonna be right here. Slip stitch into that. All right, that's gonna be the end of row 11. All right, now we can continue on in our scales. Let's turn our piece, oh, I'm sorry, chain one first, I always forget that, and then skip, and then turn around, and work into row 12. All right, now we're gonna use the unused uh, back loops only from row 10. We're gonna do two half double crochet increases in a row. So we're gonna skip our first half double crochet there, we're gonna do an increase, half double crochet increase here, that means two in the same stitch, and then another one of those here, and then one regular half double crochet, and then two more half double crochet increase, half double crochet increase, and then one regular half double crochet into the last chain there. Okay, skip our first back loop only. Here's our second one. This is gonna be a half double crochet increase. So one half double crochet, and then one more into the same stitch. And then another half double crochet increase into the next back loop only. There's one and two. So there's two half double crochet increases and then one regular half double and then two more half double increases. There's one, 
two. Let's do another half double increase right here. One, two, and the last one, again, is gonna be that weird chain right here. Pull it out a little bit, yarn over, and just do one regular half double crochet in that to finish up row 12. You can see our piece is coming together. All right, we're gonna chain one and turn. For row 13, we're just gonna do our scales across this time there's going to be five scales five repeats of the scales all the way across so that's a working front loops only single crochet double crochet chain one let's get a little bit more yarn and then slip stitch into the next and just repeat that all the way across there should be five of those single crochet double crochet chain one and then slip stitch. Single, double, chain. Next stitch. Last bit, single, double, actually we have two more repeats. And then chain and slip stitch. All right, last repeat. Single, double, chain, and then next stitch, front loop only, slip stitch. All right, that's gonna be the end of row 13. Now we can chain one and turn. Let's fold our piece over a bit so it's easier to work into. Again, we're gonna skip our first half double crochet, our first back loop only, that's gonna be all the way over here, right there. And then for our row 14 here, we want to use the unused back loop only from row 12, that's these ones, and we wanna do a half double crochet into every one across, there's gonna be 10 total. So skipping our first one right here where my needle is, we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then the last one's gonna be in that weird chain at the very end there. Yarn over, skip that first back loop only and start in the second, and then half double all the way across. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then here's our last one into that weird chain stitch that we might have a problem with. Yeah, so let's go ahead and get our needle. Put it right in there, just kind of stretch it out, and then half double into that, like that. There we go. All right, and that'll be the end of row 14. Row 15, we're gonna chain one and turn, and then we're just gonna do, we're gonna repeat what we did on the last row. We're gonna do our scales all the way across, and there should be five across it. So we're gonna go single, double, chain one, slip stitch, all in front loops. The single and double are in the same stitch. So next next repeat, single, double into the same stitch, and then chain one, and then slip stitch into the one after that. Okay. Single, double. Oh, we got a little bit of lint. and then chain, and then slip stitch. That'll be our third repeat, two more. Single, double, chain one, slip into the next. 
last repeat, single, double, chain one, and then the last one's that really tricky one where you gotta kinda go through the top of it like that, and then slip stitch. Actually, did I? I didn't get through all those stitches there. Let's try that one again. There we go. There we go. All right, so that's five of those scales. And then we'll chain one. That'll be the end of, I believe that was row 15? I think that was row 15. You know what? Let's count. Let's count. We should have, these are going to be our odd rows. Any scales are going to be odd rows. So that's going to be one, two, or one, three, five, seven, nine, 11, 13, and 15. So we just finished row 15. Okay, perfect. Turn our piece around. We're in row 16 now. Row 16 is actually the same. We're just going to half double crochet all the way across. Um, we're going to skip our first back loop only right here. And there should be 10 half double crochets into the remainder. And then don't forget about that chain at the end. So skip the one where the needle's in. And start right here. We're going to do 10. 1, 2, 3, oopsies, 4, 5, and 6, Seven, eight, nine, and then our last one's that weird chain. I'm gonna use my needle to help pry that one open a little bit. And then, there we go, 10. There we go. You can see how our piece is coming together. Okay, and it kind of looks like a little strange, like the shaping's a little weird. We're going to fix that when we sew it onto the body, though. Um, we're going to sew it on a little bit easier. And also the scales hide a lot, too. So it's going to be sewn on like this. You can see how it's starting to come together. All right. We're on row, uh, I believe that was row 16. So now we're on row 17. We're going to chain one and turn. And then we're just going to, it's the same one again. There's five scales across for row 17 again. So that means we're just going to skip our first chain and then do our scales all the way across. So that's, again, single crochet and then double crochet and then chain. And then into the next stitch here. Remember, don't forget they're only front loops only. Slip stitch one. Let's keep doing that across. Single double chain slip stitch into the next single whoops ah, if I can get into that last one there we go it's gonna be single and a double into that same one and then a chain and then a slip stitch into the next See, once you get into the zone, it's pretty nice. Single, double, chain, slip in the next. Last one, single, double, chain, slip stitch into the last one. All right. That'll be the end of row 17. Now we're on to row 18. We're gonna chain one, turn it around. And this time we're gonna do our decreasing again. So this time we're gonna do, don't forget, we're gonna skip our first one here, but then starting to the next one right here, we're gonna start with three half double crochets. So that's one, two, three, and then we're gonna do our single crochet two together. So that's gonna be there and there for our single crochet two together. And then we'll repeat that one more time. So that's one, two, three, and then single crochet two together using the last two bits. Okay, so yarn over, 
skip that first back loop only here, starting in this one, half double crochet. There's one, and three half double crochets in a row. So there's one, two, three, and then our single crochet two together. So we go pull one through the next loop, and then one through the loop after that, and then through all three. That's our single crochet two together. Now let's repeat that one more time. That's three half double crochets. One, two, three, and then half double crochet two together. One, and two. And then pull through both for that last single crochet two together. All right, and that's going to be the end of row um, 18. Cool, cool, cool. We're actually almost done with this. You can see how it's coming together. All right, we're gonna chain one and turn. And now for row 19, another round of scales. This time there's only gonna be four scales across. So that's front loops only, single. Did I do that right? Yeah, double, chain one. And then slip stitch into the next front loop. And then keep repeating that. Next stitch, single, double, chain, and then the next stitch, slip. Almost done, single, double, chain, and then slip stitch. Last bit, single, double, oops, there we go, and chain, and then to the last one, remember that last one's a little weird, we're going to slip stitch, okay, it's coming together, all right, that's the end of round 19, for round 20, we're going to start by chaining and turning around, I'm sorry, row 20, and for row 20, we're gonna decrease down yet again. This time, don't forget, we wanna skip our first one. That's gonna be this one right here. We wanna do two half double crochets and then our single crochet two together, repeated one more time. So that's again, half double, half double, and then single crochet two together in these last two. Okay, so skip that first one. Starting the second one here. We'll do one and two. So there's two half double crochets, and then we want our single crochet two together. So we're going to go pull one through, and then one through the next, and then through all three. All right, one more time. Let's do that repeat again. Two half doubles. One, two, and then last one's a single crochet two together. This last one, I can tell this chain, I chained it really tight. So I'm definitely going to need to use my nail needle to help pry that last chain open just to make sure we can get into it. See how it's open now? There we go. So pull a second loop through that one, and then yarn over and pull through all the loops to finish that single crochet two together. And that's going to be the end of row 20. Just a few more. Row 21 chain one and turn. We're going to do our scales back across. This time there's only going to be three scales. So there, we're getting less and less scales as we go across. So I'm just going to keep doing my scales. We're going to go front loops only, single crochet, double crochet into the same stitch, chain one, then slip stitch into the next. And we want to repeat that three times. Next repeat, single and... Oops, There we go. And then double into the same. And then chain. Then slip stitch into the next. Last repeat. Single. Double. Chain. And then our last one, which is the weird one. You can barely get to that front loop right here. You want to slip stitch. Okay, 
see our pieces coming together. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right, we are on round, uh, that was round 21. Now we're on to round 22. We're going to chain one and turn. And round 22 is kind of an easy one compared to our last one. Uh, don't forget, you want to skip your first one here. And then we're just going to half double crochet six. So one, two, three, four, five. And then our last one's that weird chain right here, six. So skip that first. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. And then our last one's that weird chain. Go ahead and just bleh, pry that guy open. There we go. And there we go. Six. All right. That'll be the end of row 22. Now for row 23. I think this might be our last row of scales. Let me check. Yeah, this is our last row of scales. So we're going to work into the front loops only. Three scales across. Single crochet one to the first. And then double crochet into the same. And then chain one. Slip stitch into the next. Don't forget, you're only working the front loops only. Let's keep doing that across. Two more repeats. Single double chain and then slip stitch last bit single double chain and then our final one right here slip stitch there we go all right that's the end of row 23 and our last row of scales now for row 24, we're going to chain one, turn around, and this time we're actually going to single crochet across. We're still going to skip that first one, but we're going to single crochet. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six single crochets. Don't forget about that last weird chain stitch one right there. We'll get it prepared before we even get there. So skip that first one and single across one two, three, four, five, and then the last one's going to be right here. Six. And notice how they're all single crochets to get to the end there. Okay. All right. Now we're on our uh, that was row 24. For row 25, we want to chain one and turn. Now, for the remaining rows, we can work under both loops. We don't need to work under the, only the front loop, and we don't need to do those half. We're only going to be single crocheting from here on um, and doing invisible decreases. For row 25, we're going to skip our chain, and we're going to do a single crochet into the first one and then an invisible decrease into the next one. So again, invisible decrease, we're gonna go front loop of the next stitch, and then front loop of the stitch after right here, and then do our invisible decrease. Pull through and pull through, and then single crochet. And then we'll do that again. Single crochet one into the next after doing that invisible decrease, and then one more invisible decrease. Front loop and yeah. front loop, and then do our single crochet into those front loops. There we go. So that should only be four stitches across. Let's chain one, turn, and that'll be the end of row 25. For row 26, easy row. We're just going to single crochet into both loops all the way across. Skip that chain, but there's only going to be four single crochets across. So there's one, two, we're working under both loops now. Three and last one, four. See how our see how it's coming together? Okay. Chain one and turn, and that'll be the end of row 26. 
Row 27. For row 27, we're just going to do two invisible decreases into those front loops. We're going to skip that chain and just do two invisible decreases. So that's just front loop and ooh, another front loop, single crochet through those front loops, and then one more of those. Front loop and front loop and single crochet through those front loops. So just two stitches. That's the end of row 27. We're going to chain and turn. Last row, row 28, you just want to do an invisible decrease. So front loop and front loop. Make sure we're under all those stitches there. And then single crochet into that. That's it. All right. To finish this up, we're going to chain one. You want a very long end, about like, maybe like that long, because we're going to sew this all the way across around the body. So we did our chain, we cut the yarn, and now we can just pull it all the way through. Okay. All right, so now we have our scales. Let's get a good look at them. So that's the top of our scales. Look at it this way as well. It kind of looks like a pine cone a little bit. And then here's what the back will look like. And it does kind of look weird. It looks a little wonky, you know? Like this side's up and this side's not as up but we're gonna fix all that when we sew it onto the back. Okay, so we wanna take our back here, let's hold them both into place, and we're gonna place this right onto the back like that, and we're gonna sew it onto the back. You want the beginning of it right here to be, that's the very end of our scales, we want that to be right on the head. We're just gonna sew all the way across the back. Okay, now how to sew this on? This part can be a little tricky. It, it's kind of like, kind of a guessing game. There's no really like, I can't really give you like specific spaces for all the stitches, but I can guide you. I can guide you across. So one way you could do this is you could like pin it to the back to find where you want these to go. But I find it's kind of easiest just to improvise it. And then when you get to the arms, just really try to get down to the arms more like that. So we're going to start by going right through the top of the head. We're just going to hold it, hold the spines in place. Try to keep them held there. And we're going to start, let's start like right. We don't need to go that far up. Let's go, let's start like right here. Then we'll go up through there. Just a couple of stitches up. Okay, and then all you need to do is just go across around the outside border and then up, oops, around the outside border, up through the next stitch up right there. And just as long as you're holding it in place and making sure that it's exactly where, like you're holding it where you know you want it to be sewn on, just use adjacent stitches to those. Okay, and we're gonna really try to fix those wonkinesses of the of how the stitches are moving around as we sew it on okay see how it's getting sewn on there next stitch here and then i'm just going to come out somewhere on the body through a couple of down let's hold it hold everything in place exactly where we want it so we know where we want to go Cross. It's going to be right like there. And then down through where the neckline is. Right there. We're almost done, guys. We're almost done. Look at that. Okay. Next stitch. That's going to be right here on the body. And then I'm going to come out through right here I want it to be close to the to the arm um, the last one I did I didn't sew it as close to the arm as I kind of wish that it was because I really want it to be fully plated on the back I want I want the scales to fully cover as much as the back as I possibly can so here's the next one and then we'll go right there see I'm skipping rows too 
because it doesn't need to be like perfectly sewn on, like every stitch doesn't need to be sewn on. But, you know, as long as it's in place where we want it to be, and we're holding it in place as we go, it should be okay. It's, I mean, it's definitely not gonna get taken off. But yeah, I'm skipping two rows every time to sew it on. You can do every single row, just wherever is adjacent. Okay, so this part's got kind of like an indent in, an indent in. So we're gonna give a little bit of space for his back legs. So it's not as close to the back legs as it is to the front. Okay. Next stitch is right, I think it's this one. Up, up, a couple of rounds down. There we go. Line everything up. Make sure the other side's gonna be lined up well. Okay. We're getting down to the tail now. Oops. There we go. Right there. And it's all yarn and stuffing, so you can be pretty rough with it. You don't really need to be too delicate. Keep going down. And I know I'm showing you every single sew here, but you know, just in case. I'm I'm I don't want anybody to get lost here because especially if you've already made it this far, and I just don't want you to get stuck anywhere. Because this is a hard pattern. It's a very difficult one. Okay, do it right there. That one maybe was a little far further than I probably wanted, but that's okay. At the very bottom here, I'm gonna go straight through the center of the tail. Okay, so I'm going right through that center, and then I'm gonna go straight through the middle of these two spikes here at the end, right through the center, back through the same stitch, and then start my way up the side of it. Before I keep going, actually, I'm going to take my needle out. We're going to thread this other end. See how you have this other tail end here? Let's thread that on. Line it up. Make sure everything's where we want it to be. And then I'm just going to sew this into the body. And then I'm going to come out pretty far in. So we're going to go like towards the belly right there. We're going to use this to double knot to the other end of the brown yarn eventually. So that way we have something to knot it together with. Okay. Okay, let's see. I mean, that side's pretty, pretty well sewn on. I like that one. We turn it around like this. Okay, we want it to be sewn on like that. And like that, okay. So we're gonna go around that center in. And then we'll come up, actually, we'll just come up where that other end is sewn on anyhow and double sew it. Next stitch over. Yeah. I'm just keeping, I'm just gonna continually check it as I go. Here's the next stitch. Up a couple rounds. Don't forget we're giving a little bit of space on the legs just like how we did on the other side. We're gonna go up right here. Oops. Hold in place, couple rounds up. Go like right, actually, should we go over more? Uh, 
No, let's go right here. Okay. Adjacent stitch. Okay, this one we're gonna get close to the arm. So that way we can cover more of the back with the scales. See, we're coming right up against the top of the arm, just like we did on the other side. And up, we're gonna go along the neckline. Let's see, how close do we get on the other side of the neck? Yeah, that's about, that seems about the same. We're almost done. Last few, one. Now we're going up across to the head, oopsies. Let's go like right, no, right there. That's the one we want. Make sure to not work around the legs. Just a few more. And out through the next one right there. Okay. Last few. Head. And then I'm going to go. Let's go. Actually, let's just go through the next stitch up right here so that we can sew this last part. And then for the end of this, we're going to go through that in. And then this part's kind of hard. You want to wiggle your way through the body, through the head, and out through where that other end is, like that. That's why you want it as far up on the body as you can, because it can be really hard if it's all the way back there to get all the way in there. But that's pretty good. Let's pinch it. Make it look all nice. Make sure we like it. I mean, that's... You know what, guys? That's... That's not bad. <laughs> That's pretty good. I'm I'm pretty happy with that. All right. Now we'll take these two ends and we'll double we'll double <laughs> we'll double knot it. There's one and two. Cut it close. Take this end of our needle and we'll just stuff that back into the body like that. All right. If we want to, we can sew these claws a little bit better together, but you know what? We've done so much already, and I think I'm happy with how that is. There we go, our little pangolin. Look at how, look at what a sweet boy. What a sweet boy. Hello. All right. Thank you so, so much for crocheting this pangolin along with me and supporting this fundraiser. If you haven't yet, please, please make sure to like and subscribe down below and check out the other patterns and designers in this year's Earth Day collection, especially this patterns designer at Sir Pearl Gray. Again, you can find all of them at clubcrochet.com slash Earth Day. Thanks again for watching. Pasta la pizza and happy hooking. All right, what sound does a pangolin make? Maybe like... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know.